Since winning the Challenge Cup in their debut season in 2007 and many other trophies since, Star Class Ladies have long been a famous name in women's shinty. However, as we saw last episode, the side has recently been struggling for players, so recruitment and training by Holly and Morvan has been key to getting a team on the park. We've had one pre-season match already, mm -hmm. which, we, although we lost, actually went, it was a really positive yeah, match, um, positive outcome. We have got that positive experience team. throughout the team to kind of bring them on, so yeah. that's, you know, definitely helping yeah. a lot. Um, and then we've got another pre-season this weekend, mm -hmm. um, which we've got really good numbers for, yeah. so it's going to be a great, a great day, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's game day at Cannich, an Edinburgh-based Tayforth have travelled with their ladies and men's team for a pre-season double header. How will it be for Morvan, Holly and the crew? So welcome here, this is to Carrick Park. Uh, Stephen McLaughlin is the man in the middle for the women's game versus T4. We play in South Division 2. Key to Strach Glass's chances this year will be Isla Strachan. And she doesn't disappoint with an early soul effort. Mainstays such as Cassie Dodia are strong at the back and they get service up to developing players such as Farron here. A fascinating battle between Maddie French of Tayforth and Eleanor Mann results in a speculative effort from Eleanor to see the Tayforth keeper. 2-0 to the Strath. Not just putting a team in the park, Holly is busy between the sticks. And Morvan is put through her paces by the tenacious Kirsty McIntyre. Strath go into the second half with a 2 0 lead. T4 look to build and get back into the game. And with great teamwork, the Edinburgh base side managed to draw one back. Here we go, search, here we go. Yes, it is. Cameoing for Tayforth is Straff's own Sheena McKenzie. She has strong connections with Tayforth through her brother, Derry. Take a shot. As the clock ticks down, Tayforth push for a vital equaliser. However, the score finishes 2-1 to the strap. Holly reflects on a successful afternoon. Uh, Saturday went well. We definitely could have played better as a team. It was good to have a win, but there was definitely some things that we could work on. Um, some issues just with our passing and the hitting wasn't great on Saturday, but I think that was like the pitch was really heavy as well. Um, but you know, onwards and outwards, we getting more and more women interested so it's it's great to see our team expanding. Now sadly demolished, the Glen Africa Hotel long stood in the heart of Canach. In the 1960s it was purchased by Murdo Mackenzie, a shinty enthusiast who moved to the area but became key to reviving the club in 1964. Myrtle's passing at the age of 62 in 1987 would rob the club of one of its great figures. However, Myrtle is still remembered to this day with the Myrtle Mackenzie Memorial Trophy. Today being played for between the Strath first team and a club with which Myrtle's family is also connected, Tayforth men's team. Tayforth were formerly based in Perth, but now play in Edinburgh. 
and recently celebrated their 50th anniversary as a club. As T4 is playing South Division 2 and Strath playing North Division 1, Strath will hope to overcome T4. And with an early Penry Jones goal, that seems that it will be the case. However, T4 are well organised and rugged in the tackle. The Strath struggled to break them down. Strath also welcome back Michael Stokes, who's returning to the game after a break. After time away, it's understandable that Michael may take some time to get his eye in. But Michael's not the only one not hitting the target. Nice combination play between Donald Fraser and Michael Stokes draws out the T4 keeper who fails to clear before Donald pops in the net to make it two. It's a good time to score as Steve McLaughlin bows for half time. The Strath start the second half strongly. Tom Fraser wins the ball from a corner. But it's Penry Jones that makes it 3 0. The skill of shying is so important in Shinty. And a good shy then allows all four forwards to combine. Henry Jones to Donald Fraser and Lewis Douglas before Michael Stokes gets it over the line. 4 0 to the Strath. Then Rudy Strachan makes it 5 with a contender for goal of the season. Not to be outdone, Penny makes it six. And then it's a magnificent seven with Lewis Douglas. That's it. Oh, it's goal. Stephen McLaughlin bows for full time. And it's a successful pre season run out for Stuckwass. Murdo McKenzie trophy. Oh, Stephen Canich and they pay tribute to. A great stick last man. On hand are Murdo's sons, Colin and Roy, as well as his granddaughter Naomi, to hand over the Murdo Mackenzie Memorial Trophy to winning stuff class captain Penry Jones. Colin and Roy reminisce about their memories of their father and his contribution to the class. Well, uh, when my father moved to Cannes in 1963 to uh, to call in the hotel with uh, with his wife and my mother and also my grandparents, he, the Shinty Club was in abeyance, so he was one of the ones that uh, made efforts to start it up with the likes of Willie Fraser, uh, who was at, in the village, uh, and. Probably else and Donny Fraser. Donny uh, Fraser is brother Donald's again. Father. That's George and Donald's father. They were sort of some of the ones that were instrumental and bought the Shinty Field in Inverkanich at that time, which is one and a half miles down the road towards Muley. And that's where they started. They borrowed strips from Inverness, played in red before they got the I mean this the maroon and blue is the colours now, but at that time it's actually played in red and white. They then moved over to Kero, to Kero Farm, and donated a field for a period before this pitch uh, was built. And in the early 70s, I think yeah. this pitch, yeah. But, you know, they a good side in the early days. Some well-known players in the Shinty world, like Jerry McLennan, David and Alan Simpson, Hamish McDougall, uh, Roy Chisholm, all top, top quality players. And there's many more to mention, Donnie Sterling and other. And uh, the one that's just down Camp 1967. Uh, they then had a bit fallow period for a while before uh, coming much more to the fore again in the 80s. 
and actually they won the Ballymore Cup for the first time in 1985. No, I think it was. 86. We 86, won the Ballymore 86. Cup. 86. First of three. Ballymore's and and unfortunately, just shortly after that, my father took ill and passed away in January of 87. 87. It's a long, long time involved with the club and it was very, very close to his heart. He devoted a, a lot of time, but he was very passionate about it. And uh, for myself and Colin, there was nothing else that we could do but, uh, but end up playing Shinty for his class. So, uh, yeah. he, he, he very much um, sort of, I wouldn't say pushed us, but uh, gave us the strongest of encouragement. <laughs> it's, a, it's a family thing as well because his brother was a his younger brother, Donny, was very much the man that was in charge at La Haba. So our biggest rivalry at that time was probably, apart from Glen it was La Haba. And I remember one season we met them nine times in Vegas Cups and things like that. So, you know, and it got a bit heated between the brothers too. This is the second time actually Tafers have come up because my first game for Tafers, I think, was in this very cup. I played for one year when I moved south to Edinburgh before retiring from Sydney. So it was great to see Jason with that. And there's a couple of them uh, that played in that game are still here today. Derry Barton, for it's instance. Good to see Derry again, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think he's. Uh, he's <laughs> well, Derry is. He uh, must be the same age as me, so. Uh, but he can. He's still willing to get on the park, and uh, he did put a fantastic effort. Us did the whole two for team, to be quite honest. Uh, they did uh, do their best to make a game of it, but the uh, boss were just too strong for them on the day. The two matches played between Strathglass and their near neighbours Glen Uckert in 1887 and 1888 at the Bucht Park in Inverness were to be two of the most important fixtures ever played in the history of Shinty. These two fixtures, which inspired Gaelic poetry amongst other things, also brought about the creation of the Kamenacht Association a few years later. However, while Shinty set forth into a new era, Strathglass and Glen Uckert were to some extent left behind, and indeed would not meet again for 60 years. Until, in the aftermath of the Second World War, James MacDonald, one of the last surviving players from that game who played for Strathglass and hailed from Tomith, donated the MacDonald Cup. Ever since, this fine trophy has been at the heart of the rivalry between the two sides, known simply as the Strath and the Glen. Thursday of MacDonald Cup Week, and in a very wet Drumnadrochet, the team meet for final preparations. All about preparation, I suppose. <laughs> um, no, to get ready to uh, start the season, it's coming up. And Don Cup's always been a very important game between Glenacker and South Glass. Fifty odd years of, of um, competition between the uh, the teams in it. Um, always a, a big local derby uh, and something to look forward to. Yeah, well, you always live in hope. It's kind of, you know, um, yeah, come down the league this year, um, hoping to build up. But uh, we're going out to give our all. The crowds gather early at Blairbeg Park in Drumnadrochet for this most anticipated of pre-season fixtures. The weight of history is on the shoulders of these young men in maroon and blue and red and black. The game is preceded by a solemn in its silence for a local bereavement. Battle commences and it's the Glen that has the best of the opening stages. However, the staff seem to be holding strong. But young Charlie McLeod combines with Ryan Porter, who sneaks the ball past Adam Todd. It's tough on the park, it's even tougher on the sidelines for the Straff Strong crew as the Glen Wing Centre bundles into our tripod and breaks it. Tripod repaired, Straff are also looking a better nick, with Michael Stokes going close. As the 
first half comes to a close. The battle between Rudy Strachan and Ali McIntosh at full centre is an intriguing one. As is the battle of wills between Gwynuckert captain Billy Uckert and his staff counterpart Penry Jones. But it's the Glen that finish the first half the stronger. 1 0 to Gwynuckert remains. <laughs> set out their stall in the second half. The rules of the McDonald Cup state that if it's equal at the end of 90 minutes, it's the team that won the trophy the year before who retain it. Daniel McCallum. But sadly for Straff, very soon into the second half, they're again on the back foot, thanks to a great goal by Charlie McLeod. Knowing they now need at least three goals, the Strath don't let their heads drop and continue to apply themselves. Cameron, here we go, Rudy Strachan. First few opportunities to get that. Four and a half. It's been easy it goes. McQuinnan's got his flag up. The Straff keep trying to find a breakthrough, but the experience of good Urquhart's defence, including a man of the match performance from Lachlan Smith, makes all the difference for the Drum the Drocket side. Rudy Strachan, moving on quickly. As the game closes out, the physical presence of Michael Stokes becomes even more important for Slaquas. And indeed, it's Stokesy himself who gets a well earned consolation. Yes, it's a goal! 2 1. Is the, the referee Jamie McPherson holds the whistle to bring this latest chapter of this most ancient rivalry to an end. The day goes with Glenuckert 2 1. Well done, boys. Dan Roof, sound gamer of NMS. <sighs> Glen captain Billy Ucker goes up to collect the famous prize. Although disappointed with the result, Strathclass can be very happy with the performance against a Premiership team. This will hopefully hold them in good stead for the 2024 North Division 1 league season. Uh, it's a tough game, close game, but there's nothing really in it at all, I don't think. Um, on another day it would have gone another way, we just didn't take our chances. So. But we're moving on, to, moving on to the rest of the season, take this performance with us. Um, yeah, it sets, sets the tone for the rest of the season, I think. Yeah. Hard game, but a lot of positives to take away from it. So just got to build for the, for the rest of the season. We'll be following Strathglass as the 2024 season starts in earnest in both the men's and women's leagues. Remember to like, subscribe and comment. Until the next episode, stay strong.